Have you ever visited the Sloss Furnaces in Birmingham, Alabama? If not, then come experience this industrial wonder with all your senses. The air itself hangs heavy with the scent of smoldering coal and molten iron. A symphony of clanging machinery and roaring flames assaults your ears. As you approach the towering blast furnaces, their sheer scale and imposing presence steal your breath, casting long, eerie shadows across the surrounding landscape. Reach out, feel the rough, scarred exterior. The pitted metal whispers stories of generations past, their unyielding toil etched into its surface. Imagine the blistering heat that once radiated from these behemoths, the sweat-soaked brows and suit-stained faces of the men who tamed the flames, resting precious ore from the earth's depths. Step inside. Let your eyes adjust to the dim, cavernous interior. Shadows dance across the walls, illuminated by the warm glow of embers that refuse to die. The air is heavy, thick with echoes, the rumble of steam engines, the shouts of laborers, the crackle of burning coke. Trace the intricate machinery, the levers and pulleys that once powered this industrial colossus. As you wander through the abandoned buildings, the weight of history presses in. Can you almost hear the bustling activity, the clang of hammers, the hiss of molten metal, the shouts of foremen urging ever greater production? The very walls seem to whisper tales of the men and women who poured their lives into the forging of iron, building a burgeoning industrial empire. Close your eyes. Let your mind's eye paint the scene, a bygone era when the Sloss Furnaces were the beating heart of Birmingham's industrial might, the rhythmic stomp of boots, the rumble of machinery, the shouts of workers, all come alive in your imagination. Open your eyes, and a sense of melancholy washes over you as you gaze upon the silent, rusting giants. This once vital hub now stands as a testament to the fleeting nature of human endeavor. Even the mightiest empires crumble under the relentless march of time. But amidst the stillness, a quiet power remains, a sense of resilience, of endurance. The Sloss Furnaces have weathered the storms, a monument to the ingenuity and determination of those who toiled within their walls. This place is a living, breathing testament to the human spirit, a tangible link to the past that beckons us to explore, to understand, and to appreciate the stories that lie hidden within its shadows. The Song of the Slag Heap. It wasn't a song at all, not in the traditional sense, it was a discordant symphony of industrial groans, a rusted swing set's tortured creak, the hiss of escaping steam laced with the metallic tang of blood. It rose from the gnashing moor of the slag heap, a monstrous silhouette against the bruised twilight sky. I first heard it on a dare, the air thick with the cloying sweetness of honeysuckle and teenage bravado. The closer we crept, the more the stench of burnt rubber and singed earth assaulted my nostrils. The ground crunched underfoot, a grotesque parody of breakfast cereal. Then I saw it, a flicker of movement in the shadows, a single glowing ember eye staring out from the heart of the slag heap. It pulsed with a rhythm that mirrored the growing symphony, a rhythm that burrowed into my skull and scraped against my sanity. My friend's laughter, once a shield, became a hollow echo as the song wrapped its icy tendrils around me, promising oblivion in a discordant melody. I don't remember the trek back. My vision swam, filled with glittering cinders that danced in the dying light. The only constant, the song, a seductive promise sung in the language of the damned. Now safe in my bed, the sheets clammy with sweat, I hear the faintest echo of the slag heap song. It's a lullaby, I realize with a horrifying clarity, a lullaby sung by the restless dead. Rust children, they skittered across the factory floor like living shadows, the clang of their unseen chains the only warning before the metallic touch. Old Jebediah swore he could smell them, a sickly sweet tang like blood pooling on rusted iron. It clung to him even after they were gone, a cloying film that choked the air from his lungs. The flickering gaslight cast grotesque shapes on the decaying brick walls, morphing the innocent shadows of pipes into skeletal claws reaching for him. Every creak of the cooling furnace echoed with the hollow laughter of unseen children. Jebediah's grip tightened on the oil can, its contents a poor offering to appease these spectral denizens. 
but the chill that seeped through his worn boots was unlike anything he'd known, a soul-sucking cold that spoke not of winter, but of the eternal hunger of the damned. A metallic taste, sharp and acrid, filled his mouth, and as he stumbled back, a single rusted handprint blossomed on his chest, a chilling promise of what was to come. The elders called it the hunger of the crimson moor, a legend whispered on ragged breaths by men whose sanity had brushed the inferno. I scoffed, of course, steel wouldn't hold a gateway to hell, until tonight. The full moon, a bruised malevolent eye in the inky sky, bathed the foundry in an unnatural crimson. The air thick with the metallic tang of molten iron seemed to crackle with unseen energy. The moor, that unassuming furnace door, pulsed rhythmically, a grotesque heartbeat in the metal belly of the beast. A low rhythmic hum vibrated through the floorboards, setting my teeth on edge. My gaze, drawn like a moth to a flame, locked on the pulsating red. A metallic tang, sharp and sudden, filled my nose like blood on a hot summer day. A wave of nausea washed over me, the metallic tang turning acrid, the hum a maddening whine. My hand, of its own volition, reached out. The metal was searing hot, the heat a white-hot lance through my glove. A low, guttural moan erupted from the moor, a sound that scraped against my sanity. Panic, cold and sharp, flooded my senses. I yanked my hand back, but it wouldn't come free. The metal pulsed, tendrils of a sickly red light licking at my flesh. The moan became a ravenous scream, filling the air with the stench of burning flesh and sulphur. My vision swam, the crimson light filling my world, and then darkness.